What's up guys? Happy Saturday. Still trying to adjust my camera a little bit. Um, and don't mind the hair. I still have to redo it because I'm going to a 50th birthday party tonight. So, um, but I wanted to get on here really quick um, and just talk about just emotional toughness, I guess. Um, sorry. They made you probably dizzy from that. But anyway, um, so a little bit of a somber mood among my family. Um, yesterday, um, we lost one of our dogs, um, Johnny. He was a he was the smaller of the duo. Um, <clears throat> the two dogs were litter mates. Um, and um, how we acquired Johnny is that Johnny technically was um the runt um but he was some he was the runt that had some health problems um and it was a blessing that we held on to him for nine years um like we did in spite of him having some health problems um it's just he missed our mother a lot <laughs> and you know it was time for him to let him go um <clears throat> and when I think about it, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Anybody who says that is just a dog, is just a dog, lied to you. So you don't, yeah, no, does not understand that taking in a pet, that's like a child, okay? That is, that to me it is anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm, I know I'm taking it pretty hard because, you know, as someone who doesn't have any kids yet, you know, took, these dogs in after my mother transitioned and to lose one, it's been pretty rough. Um, I'm not even gonna sit up here in front. I think I cried several times today. Um, Cause it's just a lovable little boy. And that's not to say that our other dog isn't lovable. Cause he certainly is. He's extremely lovable too. Um, I think, you know, just this particular dog, we all kind of felt sorry for because he had some underlying health issues and, you know, we, we took care of him. Mom took care of him, um, for sure. Um, that was her baby. And so, but what brings me peace is that, you know, mom now has her, one of her fur babies up there. Um, and she did leave me with the other fur baby <laughs> who is just as sweet as well. Um, but I want to talk about um, one epidemic that I find myself thinking about. Um, my mom used to always say before she passed, because my mom has seen a lot of things and done a lot of things. And she would say things like, you know, I just have nerves of steel. You know, I must have nerves of steel because of all the stuff I didn't seen and I ain't broke yet and all this other stuff. <clears throat> uh, the way my mother had passed... Um, she was, and I'm assuming that because of all the stuff she had seen, she was too tired to fight for herself. And when I think about when she would say, you know, I have nerves of steel, I have nerves of steel. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I don't want to own that statement. I have nerves of steel. Um, the epidemic is that black women, we, because of the stuff that we've gone through and the stuff we've experienced and the stuff we've seen, it is to the point like we wear these traumas and these hurts like it's a badge of honor. I'm going to be very honest with y'all. I don't want that because when the decision was made to let Johnny go yesterday, I, I cried like a baby, okay? When I lost my mother, cried like a baby. When I lost my grandmother, cried like a baby. Um, when I lost two friends, you know, one of them was trying to talk to a man that I thought was the love of my life and just all of that happening and him being really mean, <laughs> him just really being mean. I don't want to own that type of thing because when all that transpired, I cried like a baby, all of it. When I lost my dad, when I was 15, I cried like a baby. Okay. When I broke up with another guy, my college sweetheart, I cried like a baby. You know what I'm saying? When I, years ago, when I got an eviction notice, I cried like a baby. I don't want to own <clears throat> saying, oh, well, I'm just a black woman. I'm supposed to be tough. For whatever reason, we just so happen to be, as a black woman, we just so happen to be a bullet sponge of all this stuff. 
of everything that's going on from health disparities, from growing up into growing up in a single parent home. I grew up in a single parent home. I was out the house at the time my mom got remarried. Um, even though I knew, knew who my dad was, um, and I had a relationship with him, it was my mom and my grandmother and I for quite some time. And then my brothers came into the picture. Um, but I see my mom and what she gone through with my brother's father and just knowing what the stuff that my mom has gone through, unfortunately, she thought that that was a badge of honor that she has seen so much stuff in her life that that's what made her tough. <sighs> I don't want to, I'm not sure if I want to own that. <laughs> I really don't because the stuff that I've seen in the last, not even 18 months and the stuff I experienced in the last 18 months, not including the things from the pandemic, the, the additional deaths, the social injustice, you know, now going into recession and layoffs. I don't, I honestly don't want to own that. I want to give all these battles to God. I'm, I don't want to own mental toughness. I don't. Um, because I feel like that it makes us prideful to say, oh, yeah, you know, I done seen it all and been there and da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, life is the best teacher. Yes. And you should always, if faced with something similar again, you should always kind of use another lesson. Use those notes from the last lesson and just take inventory and think about what it was that you did the last time. But I've done that. The last time, how I'm going to get over grief of a dog, honestly, is the same way of healing from grief of a parent. You know, I had to lean on God 100%. I, I cannot do this on my own. I applaud the women who, especially the sisters, who say that they can do this on their own and they got it and they're emotionally fit. And I don't... I want us as black women to get to a point where we really heal. And I'm not saying heal as in like heal just to kind of get over it and get past it. No, heal to the point where you let God work in your life in such a way that it will <clears throat> make us soft again. If, I, if I'm making sense of this, like I want to take all my battles and give it to God. Now, that's not to say that. All the battles that I've gone through and what God has brought me out of, that's not to say that it's made me, um, you know, essentially all that stuff has made me a wiser person. You know what I'm saying? Has made me wiser that I can't do none of this without God. And God has put the tools in my path to be able to, I think the best example, T.D. Jakes was being interviewed by uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick. Uh, at Elevation Church. And he said, sometimes when we ask God for the, this is loosely translated, you have to go look for it yourself. But sometimes when we ask God for a table, sometimes he'll give us the pieces of the table. And <clears throat> that's such a wide, how I interpret it, that's such a wise statement because it tells us that even though we're going to ask God for certain things, he's going to, he's going to encourage us to build it in faith and knowing that this is what we ask God for, and he's going to give it to us. And so when we finally get it, not only do we appreciate what we have, but we have to rely on God's dependency. I can't think of the verse in the message version where it says that we rely on Christ's, God's sufficiency. And I don't, yeah, I don't personally as a black woman, I don't want to own the simple fact that I feel like because I didn't seen it all and done it all. And yeah, I came up in the PJs too. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to sit there and say that I don't want to wear that badge of honor that, yeah, you know, I got this and I know this and I'm tough. I, I don't want to own that. Now, I think sometimes there was this young lady that was on another social media platform and she put it so plainly that masculine doesn't make me masculine doesn't make me, you know what I'm saying? Like masculine, masculine just means that, you know, yes, I am assertive, you know, you know, I, I admit that I'm assertive. Um, that makes me, um, a leader. Yes. There have been times where I had to step up and be a leader in something, but I think, um, also in that I reference being a Proverbs 31 woman that, <clears throat> that in God's strength and in God's wisdom that I know what I am supposed to do. 
And I want to work on healing through just the stuff that as a black woman go through. I don't want to think about any more about, you know, the mistakes that any family member has made with money and it's been passed down through my bloodline. Be the curse breaker today. That's what I said to myself. Be the curse breaker today. Today. Take that, renounce that off of yourself and renounce that, renounce that off of your bloodline. If you guys do not do that now, please go follow Tiffany Montgomery. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> go follow Tiffany Montgomery today. Watch her cover by God. Watch her lives. Not playing. <clears throat> anyway, um, it's like we just got to, you know what I'm saying? It's like we, we're holding on to everything. Our mother, our grandmother, our great-grandmother, our great-great-grandmother. When are we going to say enough? When are we going to say, God, I give you all of this. I hand you all of this. I let this go. I don't want to, I don't want to do this, this fighting anymore. I don't want to be the mentally tough person anymore. When do we say that? Because I said, I've gone through a number of things and, you know, my mom would always say, you know, I have nerves of steel. I don't. (laughs) Because my two months before my mother had passed away, she had sent me a card about how proud she was about the woman that I became. Y'all had to pull over and bawl my eyes out. And even after she passed, I opened up that card. I had to stop what I was doing because I had bawled my eyes out. I know I'm not mentally tough, okay? I, I know I'm not. I Look, I am as soft as ice cream, okay? <laughs> like, I am softy cakes for real. Like, anything that pulls on my heartstrings, boy, I tell you. And so when I was watching Johnny transition, you want to talk about somebody who was chopped liver, I was done for, okay? So I just think that, you know, <clears throat> I feel like that as a black woman, it, that's so important. Like, we have to have a soft side. There, uh, And I'm not saying you have to be a punk, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? When, and that's why it's so important for us to know the word of God, because if we know the word of God, that sets the standard of how you are supposed to be treated. Because if somebody else is coming against what God says you are and what God says you're capable of doing, then that's not the person you need to be around. So studying the word of God helps us set that standard. Okay. And, And that bar is set real high. For example, I had made a decision a long time ago that doing things my way when it comes to <clears throat> being in the same path as meeting my help meet. Um, it just wasn't working. Just saying sex and putting sex in the picture was one of those things that I said, God, I have to do this your way because I've been doing it from my, I've been doing it my way for long, way too long. And so here it is. And so uh, here I am in year three, okay, and truth be told, it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome experience for me because I'm just mindful that submitting to God's way is the better way because I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm not, I'm not trying to get divorced. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that. And so, like, with me not engaging in sex. Um, that's, that's not to say it doesn't come with trials because you are going to have those thoughts. They're going to come up in your mind. Um, you are going to come across something that's going to be like, Ooh, have I come across that? Sure have. Okay. Um, you are going to come across thoughts of an ex. Have I done that? I sure have. Okay. Um, and you just get the ruminating on it and you know, it's like the devil has like his, his, like his forehead, his hand has your ex's name on it and this is the devil and the devil is literally placing your ex's name on your forehead and just presses it on there that's what it's like all the time so i'm not saying you're gonna have (laughs) you're not gonna have those issues because you are but that's why go follow tiffany montgomery but that's why things like praying and fasting is so important like things like staying in a bible believing church is so important things like having friends a a prayer circle friends 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 that can pray for you not friends that want to attack you um like the other young lady that i just reading about and it's horrible okay that's horrible 
you you call them people and and just looking at that situation you have to be careful about who you call a friend i'm not even joking you have to be careful but that situation that happened to that young lady horrible it's horrible um but in that you know what i'm saying i just think about i just think about why it's so important for us to get into our bibles because the bible sets the standard and that bar is high but it sets the standard about who we should be around the things that we should do when we go through trials who we should who we should depend on when we go through those trials um things that we should say to ourselves in alignment with the promises of God and his word about our trials um praying for the people that are around us praying um to make sure that the people around us are who are they say they are and they should be around us praying that we give our burdens to God because he cares for us and he wants us to rest. He wants us to rest because he knows. And when I mean rest, I'm not talking about just pray about it, go about your business, but it is also in your mind. We got to stop ruminating on it. I'm guilty of that. Got to stop ruminating on it. Got to stop saying to ourselves, oh man, if I see this person, da, 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 I should have said, no, no, that's ruminating. I should have said this and I should have said that. They talked about it in Sunday school last Sunday. That's ruminating. That's not giving God our battle. We say it because it sounds good, <laughs> but we not really believe in it. And so that's the reason why we're constantly always in this position of, oh, I'm strong. I got it. I can do this. No, no, sis, you can't. <laughs> you can't. I Look, listen, I am a softy, okay? I am a big softy, okay? Anything and anything that is adorable and cute, anything that pulls on my heartstrings, which right now has been everything, okay? My, but I ain't no punk either, okay? <laughs> I ain't no punk because um, very, and when we get into the word, when we know enough word in us, um, that develops our discernment. And so... With discernment, I know the difference between when something is genuinely supposed to be here or when somebody trying to punk somebody. Okay, so I pray in 2023 that we, as a black woman, embrace a place of it's okay to be soft. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay for something to pull on your heartstrings. It's okay. Do I have it all together? I don't because there's some things that I still want to hold on to. You know what I'm saying? But I pray that, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2023, we get to a place that allows us to rest in God. And I firmly believe that's what will make, you know, make us women softer, per se. I don't want to, I don't want to sound different or weird but anyway I don't want to sound like negative Nancy that type of thing but I want to say that I just feel like that if we work hard to legitimately give our burdens over like truly give our burdens over and I think you know this this whole concept of soft era this and soft life that cool but I think it is deeper and bigger than keeping a clean home yeah you gotta keep a clean home but you keep a clean home not because social media tells you to but you keep a clean home so the holy spirit can work through your life because holy spirit can't move with clutter can't move through junk okay just be keeping it real with you um we should we should want to do things like get our nails done and get our hair done not because we're trying to impress what the world has to say about what the beauty standard is but understanding what the beauty standard is in God's eyes. A lot of times when we overdo all this, it's because this and this is crusty. What's on our minds and what's in our hearts are crusty. So sometimes, not all, sometimes we laid on real thick with the enhancements, the lashes, the makeup, 
the hair, everything. We lay it on so thick. Just imagine it being a big old cut that you're trying to cover up. You're trying to stop the bleeding because you any you know if you see bleeding, you see blood. You don't you don't want people to see you bleeding, right? Or you don't want to, you don't want to get blood on anybody else. So what do we do sometimes? We physically cover it up. All types of enhancements, all types of changes, all that. We cover it up. We cover it up because oftentimes when we don't heal these areas, when we don't heal it enough, it'll bleed. It'll bleed in other places in our lives, our diet, our health, our finances, um, what we say to people, what we say to ourselves, our interactions with people. If we don't heal these areas, it'll bleed. It'll bleed on somebody else. Sorry, I think I made you dizzy. But I think those things are just so important for us to embrace as we claim these soft errors, because I think just sometimes we just get into it and, you know, we get into what social media says is the standard and what's is a good thing. No, for example, I'll talk to you guys about fast fashion. Me personally, fast fashion. Okay. Sometimes, you know, fast fashion being like, you know, you want to get on this, the sheens and the fashion novas of the world, even H&M. Y'all don't know this, but H&M is fast fashion. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with one or two pieces from H&M that you like that, you know, that you can wear. Don't matter. You know what I'm saying? And I think fast fashion, a social media young lady out of Chicago said it best is that social media has us brainwashed, right? And it has us thinking that... um I guess like overconsumption is okay. So because certain things are so cheap, you should buy a whole bunch of them, right? And so, um, but if you get something that is of good quality, that's gonna last, I'd be the first one to tell you, I'm I'm all right spending seventy, eighty dollars on a pair of jeans, okay? Because I know for sure they ain't going nowhere for a couple of years, okay? A couple of years. Um, I'm okay with, you know what I'm saying. I'm looking to invest in a really nice bag in the next couple of months. Why? Because, and as long as it's good leather, it does not have to be Louis Vuitton, um, does not have to be any of those. As long as it's good quality leather, I'm willing to spend several hundreds on them, okay? That's because I know it's going to last for a very long time, all right? So, um, but that's what I equate to being, finding that softer side that softer side that says like, hey, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to get it cheap to overconsume. I'm going to buy it expensive. So something that'll last. Right. And I think those are just, that's what I think about in terms of me trying to get, try, and I say trying, try and get to a point where life is softer. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with now, if I can't afford it, you know, and it's not in my budget, we just don't buy it if it ain't in my budget. Um, but even then, when I think about that, sometimes we think about, we obsess about money too much because oftentimes we grow up in situations where we never, never really had a lot of it growing up. It's always been an issue. And I think when we place our minds in knowing that God can always provide for our needs and God does provide for our wants, <laughs> when we, when God provides for our needs, and we know that we're covered, there's certain things that we shouldn't be ruminating about, about money. That's just what it is. No, I'm not going to get into the whole manifestation thing. Some of that stuff is witchcraft. No. So anyway, uh, but just knowing that, realizing that it's important for you to be a good steward and just thank God that you're a good steward over what you have. Always, just always thank God that you're a good steward over what you with, with what you have, and I know that if you are faithful over little, you'll be faithful over. God will make sure that you will have much. Loosely translated, don't beat me up, but I just find that it's just so interesting, so interesting that as Black women, as Black women, you don't hear about some of, some of our um, Caucasian or Asian sisters going through the stuff that we go through because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that as black women we go through. I, I, you know, I grew up with a mother who went through a lot of things in her childhood. I've seen that in like other relatives. I've seen that in friends. It's almost becoming the norm that we suffer. If not, if, if not, it is already 
not already there. That is a standard that black women should suffer. I rebuke that on every black woman who is watching this and listening to the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. You will prosper. You will heal. You will be great. You are a great steward over what you have, over your house, over your kids, over your car, over your job. In the name of Jesus, I pray and prophesy that you will, as well as me, will prosper in the kingdom. I just don't, I, I, I'm, like I said, I, I'm, I have my, I'm, I'm soft. I'm a big kid. It says in the Bible that we should present us, present ourselves like children, having childlike faith. I'm a big old baby. Okay. <laughs> big old baby. Anything that just touches my heart, which is a lot of things. Oh my gosh. I am soft. <laughs> okay. With my brothers who right now we're all living in different states. Oh man, I ain't gonna lie to you. Right now it's driving me nuts. Okay. I'm trying to figure out a way how to minimize that because I'm soft. I miss my brothers. I love them. I miss my brothers. I miss my cousin who lives in Texas. Miss my cousins who live in Delaware and New York. Soft, okay? Because those those things, I'm so I, I want to be a good steward over those things, over those relationships that I still currently have. I just, you know, I don't want to be in a position where because I'm a black woman, I'm supposed to be tough all the time. No. Now, like I said, there's a difference between being tough all the time and being punked. What you will not do is punk me. OK, <laughs> that's what you will not do. But and that and that's on because me being a child of the most high God. Yeah, you're not doing that. OK, but at the same time, like I don't want to display the persona that because I've seen a lot and I've experienced a lot that I, it's poker face 24 seven. It's not. Cause like I said yesterday, when I left my dog at the vet um, for him, for him to be cremated, oh, I was in shambles. I was in shambles. Okay. So, um, and like I said, cry a couple of times a day. Um, yeah, there, there's nothing. And I think, just as not even just black women, but just as black people, especially my black men, my black brothers, my black Nubian kings, like I I briefly attended a funeral of a um black man who died at fifty three. <sighs> These brothers are dying way too young. Like way too young, and that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. These brothers are dying way too young. 50s is young. I just, you know, and like I said, I just attribute that to just the stuff that we just won't let go. We wear life's trials and traumas like it's a badge of honor. It ain't no badge of honor. Ain't no, ain't no badge of honor. I just want these life experiences to be teaching experiences. I don't want to hold on to them as like, I'm just going to wear this in my back pocket. And anytime somebody tries to do this, I will always lean on this because I came out stronger. No, mm -mm. that's a whole lot of pride. And I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't want to own that. I don't want to own that. Like I said, God who has certainly humbled a sister in the last 15 months. And really not even then, probably since 2020. God has really humbled a sister really in the last three years. Um, and so I'm thankful that it's pushing me to hunger for him more. Like, really just hunger for him and just lean on him not only not only did it to reach out to God to see what is next for me in my life and following his pathway but to really understand that God is in control of this there is nothing that goes on in your life that does not pass through God's hands 
And so uh, if you are a sister listening to this, I pray right now today in the name of Jesus that you take some time out for yourself and sit back and ask yourself, what am I still holding on to that makes me say what I say and do what I do? Like, like talk to the Holy Spirit, like talk to the Holy Spirit. And if you're able to speak in your heavenly language, do just that. Okay. But it's all about just really asking God. And if you are in a position to say to yourself, like, oh, I'm good. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Baby, that ain't it. Okay. So... Because I know that sometimes I get in my own way and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got this. I did this before. Oh, Patrice, wait a minute. Come back. What? Why are you going through it again if you got this and you seen this again? What did you not learn? So I just think that those things are important. And I think about those things from a public health perspective and a, a maternal health perspective is that they talk about things like preeclampsia. Um Back in the day when my mom was pregnant with myself, it was toxemia. Um, why so much stress happens on the black woman and their body and their body almost shuts down when giving birth. If not, if it does shut down. And I was just reading something and like I said, I had to find it. Basically, a lot of black women were exposed to so many environmental stressors so early in our pregnancy. So basically what I've gathered is that not only do we need to be healthy before our pregnancy, during our pregnancy and after our pregnancy, but so importantly, we got to be healthy before our pregnancy. Just got to be healthy. And what I mean by healthy, I'm not talking about just eating your vegetables, drinking your water, maintaining a good weight, Mining your stress, knowing what your stresses are, but just taking care of your mental, like starting to heal from the traumas that we've experienced of our lives. And I say we because it's me too. I desire a family. And not only I'm so thankful for this season, because not only is the opportunity for me to get healthy, but for my future husband not to feel like that marrying me is a liability. I don't want my future husband to feel like that he's marrying a liability. I don't. And so, so important, um, especially our sisters and our finances. That is going to be an ongoing thing because I feel like that because some of us didn't come from money, we didn't come from having abundance of money, we didn't come from having the resources that in most cases were terrified of spending certain things or doing certain things because we we came from not having. I say that because I've been there. Because we come from not having, all of a sudden, we're almost obsessed with thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? But if we know God is a way maker and provider, we shouldn't be shouldn't be obsessed. Should not be obsessed. But that was just my two cents. Pray for our family. Like I said, losing our family dog was pretty tough. Um especially the little one who had some health issues. But what made this one particular dog so special is that he was so clingy. He was so clingy to us. He was like a little toy dog. Uh, but our other dog, he's okay. Um, moping around a little bit, not really eating. So I want to spend some time with him today and just kind of just be home, just hanging out with him as he's switching positions from one end of the bed to the other. So, um, yeah. So, but I pray that this message helped you. Um, like I said, parts of the Bible loosely translated throughout this message. And I pray that you don't take this message in a sense of, oh, well, girl, there's nothing, you know, you need to be strong all the time. You'll be all right. You'll get over it. And, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I think, I was looking at something and someone was saying some something to someone else about losing a pet. And it's like, oh, it's just a pet. No, <laughs> it's just a sweet, sweet dog. And so like I said, it's tough for all of us. But um, 
just that that poker face that mental face that we have to put on for the world because the world is rough to us yes the world is rough to us and the world can eat you it, it eat you chew you up and spit you out but i'm not focused on what the world has to say because my focus is heaven minded heavenly minded heaven is the goal so uh i just pray it helps somebody hopefully but I pray you have a great Saturday and stay warm because some parts of the U.S. are freaking freezing. So have a great day. I love you.